Hi, welcome to Street Priest Ministries. I'm your host, Brother Jay, as we're taking the Gospels back to the streets. Today's drive through message is the Passover. And we're going to title this C1 for Communion 1. C1. Okay. Um, I'd like to say to my um, Hebrew friends, uh, Peshach, Sama, Shalom Alekin. Okay. Happy Passover to you. Okay. We're going to turn in to Exodus 12, 1. Exodus 12, 1. Now, I'm going to take you back and introduce you guys to what Jesus had told his, actually Jesus had gave as a commandment to his disciples to keep. But it started here in Passover. It changed into what you know it as, is the Holy Eucharist or communion. Terminology you feel you might be familiar with. And we're going to do this now. Man has a way of taking the things of God and putting them back in the mystical woo land where only the uh, elite of priestly orders and this and that have the right to do certain things God had intended for the ordinary people. Don't forget the whole story of Christ. Christ struck a tent of flesh. He was God in the flesh. He said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why the Jews of his day accused him of uh, blasphemy, put him on a cross. But no man could do those miracles that they be of God as they profess, but still, he threatened the status quo of his day because what he took from him was power and gave it back to the people. Jesus was the original street priest, as I said many times. He was not the sumptuous type that, like the Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees of them days, the religious order of that day. Christ was not religious. <laughs> Christ was ordinary. He looked ordinary. He, he was among, he did extraordinary things. But he was among the ordinary. Sinners, sinners loved and embraced him. The religious, staff, the religious establishment of his day were the ones that put him on the cross. So they take in what God intended for the ordinary man and woman, families and households to commemorate, to take the place of the Passover. Look at the shop. And they put it in mystical woo land. And during the Middle Ages, when Constantine took paganism and wedded, and wedded that to Christianity, along came a lot of the ancient mystery, Babylonian, Baal, sun god, astros, moon goddess, traditions combined with Christianity. And they, had, they even had communion in the pagan culture. And the priest would say, Hocus corpus meus. This is my body. And they taught what was called trans substantiation. To where you were literally drinking blood and eating the flesh of Christ. Which was where you got cannibalism, cannibal, priest of Baal. 
they reverted back to paganism under behind the mask of Christianity. That's all it was. Hocus corpus me. That's where you get hocus pocus. Magic. It was a magical transubstantiation into the flesh of Christ and the blood of Christ. They, t they taught with their apostate teaching. And you always had to rescue the baby from the bathwater. And Luther came along and did that. Martin Luther. Now, we're going to put communion back in the house. You know, I felt in my spirit so many people around the world that are suffering sickness, illnesses, disease. And this is a simple way of faith between you and God an act of faith that both encompasses the physical and the spiritual that you can do in your home day. Okay, so we'll start at Exodus 12, 1. Oh, let me see, make sure. Let me check. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be as the first month of the year unto you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. A lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for a lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall you make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. It had to be perfect. So remember, this is symbolizing Christ. Christ is the Passover lamb. He's the lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. This was temporary because sin came down. And you confessed, you took this lamb in your house and made it a pet. Kept it in there for two weeks. You had to bond with this animal to show you what Christ felt. Excuse me, what God the Father felt sacrificing his son on the, on the cross. We're going to get around to teaching on the cross, don't worry. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first order. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and he shall take of the blood and strike it on two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. Now God's, to give you the backdrop, God and then wreak havoc on the land of Egypt, uh, brought down all the plagues, I think he's, it was nine plagues. This is the tenth one, but he's telling them to put this blood on their door posts. And God's going to have a death angel pass, an angel of death. And he's going to slay all the firstborn of Egypt. Every man, woman, and child. I'm mean, excuse me. No, I'm so sorry. The firstborn male child of Egypt. Let me correct myself. This is payback. Because remember, Pharaoh, when Moses was born, they killed their firstborn. So, you know, God got pretty good memory to exact vengeance on you. His, his will of justice is slow. It'll eventually get around to crushing you. It's just a slow process. And Moses is a lethal weapon that came back. He was trained to be the next pharaoh of Egypt. 
And that's a fact of history. You can look it up one why and prove that to God's archaeology. But anyway. So he's they're being instructed to put this blood on the doorpost. That the deaf angel will spare their house. Now it doesn't matter about their religious beliefs. It doesn't matter about their social status in the community. That's from the rich to the poor. This is an act of faith. If you didn't do it, your firstborn would be killed. Period. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses when they shall eat it. And they shall eat of the flesh that night roast with fire. The lamb was roasted. And unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat. Okay. So now you got that. The Passover. The Pasha. So now we're going to go from there to 1 Corinthians 5-7. Pastor Paul is going to preach. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Now, Paul's going to... Don't forget he's second only to Christ. Always give Paul... Five-star general, the New Testament. And he was used to more or less unfold the mysteries, unpack the mysteries of God's word. And what all these, because he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees himself, for God converted him. And he was to unpack all these spiritual truths of what all of these Levitical ritualistic codes was about, the law, all that. That was all. Paul was the dispensationist of the gospel, the good news. But he also showed how Christ fulfilled the law in its entirety. So we're at 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump as ye are leavened for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us Paul letting you know that Christ is the Passover that's all I wanted you to see there now we're going to move on to Luke 22 1920 Luke 22, 19, Now, I'm going to give you a chance. I want you to get some wine. Or if you don't drink wine, you can use water. Get your glass, small as you can get. And we're going to have communion together. And I'm going to give you a couple minutes to gather these things. as I teach on this. You can, you can use what, whatever, bread, crackers, piece of bread. All right, 22.19. Okay. Like I said, it could be water, it could be whatever. It could be bread, crackers. Now, we're going to start with the bread. And this is very important. Now, when we take communion, you're to, Paul has said, you to have your absolute focus on 
on the communion. That's very important because this symbolized Christ. And we're about to read right now why this is important to focus. Okay, you ready? I yeah, sure. hope you got your wine and your bread ready to go. Chapter 22, 19. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. This is broken. Now, in the pagan tradition, they have what's called a sun hose, a wafer, which symbolizes Baal, the, the sun god. They don't break that. But Christ was broken. The bread was broken. Keep that in mind. He said, and he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. This do you in remembrance of me. As we focus on this bread, we think of Christ. Now, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon us. And with his stripes, we are healed. As you focus on this bread, God not only poured out his wrath on Christ for our sins, he also poured out all sicknesses, diseases, all manner of ailments. You don't have to live with any disease. I don't care from cancer to you choose, whatever your ailment is. You don't have to suffer. All that was poured on Christ. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the doctors say that you could be dying from. I don't care if you had stage 5 cancer. As you take this, I've seen miracles. I've, I've had medical miracles. God has performed on me. God is a healer. One of his names is Jehovah Rapha. I'm the Lord the healer. As you focus on this bread, Christ healed everybody around, healed thousands of people. It was his nature to heal. You don't have to talk God into healing for you. You can do this yourself in your living room or wherever you're at. Just focus on this and believe. And you can do this daily. This is an act of faith that you can do in your home daily. As you focus on this bread, Thank Christ for his healing in advance. I teach faith. This is a faith ministry. You walk by faith, not by sight. Focus on this bread. Don't focus on your ailment. Don't focus on your disease. I don't care if you're on crutches. Believe God can heal you if you're in a wheelchair. Try to stand up by faith. Christ made them stand up, made them stretch forth their hand. He didn't say, oh, you poor cripple, you this. He said, get up. Take up your sick bed and walk. As you focus on this, think of our healer, Christ Jesus. Christ is still in the healing business. This bread symbolizes that. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. This do in your remembrance of me. His remembrance you, Christ, with your stripes. So say it with me. With his stripes, we are healed. And believe it in faith as we eat this bread in Jesus' name. Also, we had the blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there should be no remission of sin. Christ's blood was poured out for your sins. And you're to commemorate this through the Eucharist that, that Christ had instituted right here. He said, this is the cup of my New Testament in blood. That's verse 20. This is the cup of my New Testament. New Testament. We're not under the law anymore. We're under the New Testament. Testy is die. Something has to die. It's a will and testament. We're under the covenant of the blood of grace of Christ. Not under the blood of sacrifice of animals and lambs. That's the law in Moses. Christ ended that. He put all his sins up on you. So if you burden down with sin or you got a guilt about excuse me, got guilt about something, leave it at the cross. 
you're made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. We're all sinners. I fall short every day. I'm the chiefest of them. Don't look to, I said it a million times. Don't look to me for no righteous. No righteous right. Get out of me as the Holy Spirit that knows no sin in me. That you get a glimmer of every now and then. But we all have two natures warring with each other in us, the flesh and the spirit. Sometimes the spirit's up, sometimes the flesh is up. Till we're out of these mortal bodies. So as you focus on this, you think of the Christ's redemption. He's redeemed us. We're made worthy by the blood of the Lamb. Don't let no Rufus Glitter Teeth, Smiley Song, a New Age Baby tell you no good, you're rotten, you're a dirty sinner. No, we're saved by grace. The Bible said we're saved by grace. Not of works. It's a, it's a gift of God, at least any, any man should boast. Christ paid for all our sins. From birth to death. Every sin, you, and you're going to sin every day. I sin every day. There are sins you do, you know, I've taught them a lot, that you don't even know you're doing. That, that was over 613 precepts. Beside the kosher laws and other laws that we violate on a daily basis. And Jesus got even deeper. He said, the thought is... If you think it, you're sin. And, and uh, I've taught Jeremiah, our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately to pray, Jeremiah 17. So we're all sinners. We're all no good, dirty, low down, rotten sin, deserving grace. And as you focus on this, you think of Christ and thank him for what he did for you at Calvary. As he said, take drink. This is the blood of my New Testament which is shed for many, as often as you do, remember to me. We say, thank you, Lord, for your grace, unmerited faith in me, sinner. I'm made worthy by the blood of the Lamb, say I'm made worthy by the blood of the Lamb, as we drink this by faith in Jesus. Okay. We had our first communion together, and this, uh, no, this is going to be a series. This is communion one, the Passover. And I'm just going to do a series of Passover because, like I said, we need to get this back into the homes. Get this back into the people's hands. <laughs> get the people what they want. <laughs> but anyway, if this message has been good to you, and um, I've taught you, yo, bring your tithes, first fruits. Alabaster Box of Street Priest Ministry dot org. Get that donate button and give accordingly. Hope you grow in faith. And a good night to you. Good day. Good evening around the world. In Jesus' name.